Alright, so. To lead off, we show a picture of the Joker because he is someone who has this disorder. I'm Jensen Lopez, this is Emma Botton and Damien Higginbotham, and we are here to talk about antisocial personality disorder. So, antisocial personality disorder can be traced back to the early 19th century. Um, before they actually found out like what exactly antisocial personality disorder was, um, Pritchard, in 1835, described these individuals as morally insane. He would say that intellectually they were normal and sometimes like exceeded in school, but then when it came to like their morals, they were perverted and crazy. Um, then in 1899, uh, moral insanity was replaced with psychopathic inferiority. And then in 1939, Henderson sat down the main outline defining the modern antisocial personality disorder. Um, in 1959, the definition was changed to include a reference to the treatability of this disorder because originally, if they said you had antisocial personality disorder, you would go straight to a hospital. And then they realized, okay, not everyone is going to be super crazy and have it like very severe. And so then they just said, okay, if they end up going to jail, which most of them did, because they didn't have like they didn't know like where the line was, so they would cross the line and go to jail. But then, um, so now the treatability is still an ongoing debate whether they should like if they say, oh, you're diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, you need to be institutionalized right away because I think these people are crazy. Um, but now they're starting to realize, okay, we can kind of try and diagnose these people early and treat them like more like simpler before they start to go crazy. Um, so the causes were mostly biological and social, not as much psychological. So biological, these people were born with abnormal chemistry in their nervous system. So they were born a little bit off. Like they don't know as much as we do the difference from right and wrong. Um, they had de deterioration in parts of their brain that um, affected aggressive behavior, judgment, and decision making. And then they also had reduced levels of brain um, But mostly what affected if people have antisocial personality disorder is um, their social, like the social effects. So if people grow up when, if their parents, if they have an absent parent, or if their parents are divorced, or if they go through traumatic situations, then that's going to cause them to not be, to kind of like create the symptoms of antisocial personality disorder. Um, oftentimes, if their parents have or show symptoms of um, antisocial personality disorder, then these children will eventually develop a full blown case of antisocial personality disorder. Um, Okay, well, moving on to my part is the behaviors, and we have a picture of Ted Bundy, who most people know, and if you don't, he murdered a lot of people. He had antisocial personality disorder. A lot of the times it's just called APD. Uh, it's commonly referred to as psychopaths or sociopathy, pathy. and uh, most people experience a broad spectrum of socially unacceptable symptoms. They, all in all, they're just jerks is what I think, just from reading about it a lot. But they have disregard rights for other people's rights, like they cross the line a lot, or they don't really care about your bubble, or something like that. They have reckless disregard for safety of themselves and others, like they don't really feel pain as much as you, a normal person would. They have an abnormal lack of remorse, so say they kill an animal, they don't really feel bad about it, like they kill their house pet, they don't care. It's just like. They have failure to plan ahead, so they're not very good in the workforce or working around other people. They just can't really do it. They're very deceitful. They lie to get what they want. They'll use humor. They'll try to be, uh, what's the word? Oops, all right, well, failure to conform to the social norms. They don't feel as if they need to follow the rules of other people, or they don't look up to 
hierarchy, I guess. They just don't like to follow rules. And they use charm and wit to manipulate others. Diagnosis. I got a lot of my sources from the DS MIB handbook and the University of Mayo.org. And before a patient can be diagnosed, they have to be 18 years old, and they also have to have symptoms of conduct disorder before the age of 15. They, a lot of the things that how they diagnose people is what their symptoms are. So say they're not very good around other people, they don't care about crossing the line with another person, they're very deceitful, they lie a lot, they get in trouble. A lot of them run into problems with the law, they usually end up getting arrested because they don't comply with the law, they don't feel as if they need to. Uh, and they usually end up hurting themselves or others, kind of like Ted Bundy did, he murdered other people. And they're very irresponsible. All right, so our case vignette is Michael Rogers, and he's a 22-year-old Caucasian male attending Pierce College in Puyallup. And there's a journal entry included later to kind of illustrate how he interacts. <coughs> um, so when Michael was a child, he was kind of neglected, and his father was an alcoholic, and his mom had to work two jobs to support the family. So, and then also his dad was abusive and beat his mother and eventually killed her when he was 12. So by the time Michael was 15, he began to exhibit symptoms. So he wasn't doing real well in school, didn't really have friends, got into some fights, <coughs> and eventually he ended up killing some animals. So then the rest of his high school career, he was kind of a bad kid, got into fights, used drugs, stuff like that. Um, he graduated high school with a 2.7 GPA, but he got a 1920 on the SAT, so he's a very intelligent individual. Went to college, eventually ended up assaulting one of his professors, so they sent him to counseling for that, and was very soon diagnosed with APD. Um, so now he's engaged in psychotherapy and has been prescribed Zyprexia, which is a drug that kind of reduces your aggressiveness. So at, that, that would definitely help individuals with this disorder. And after a year on this regimen, he's gotten a lot better. He doesn't really assault people anymore. He doesn't do as much bad things. So this is the journal entry. I walk around during the day and all I see are losers with no lives. I got into a fight at a bar last night. I broke the idiot's nose. He threw the first punch all because I bumped into him. What dull little lives these students must live. All they do is get drunk and have parties. Pathetic existences. Yesterday I got slapped because I grabbed some chick's ass at a bar. Stupid bitch. So that's just to illustrate how big of assholes these people are. <laughs> like. They really don't care about other human beings. So we have work set. Um, I got most of my information from this um, from the from the Alright. Any questions? Randy. What's the conduct disorder that you had mentioned? So like obviously like I talked about Ted Bundy, yeah. most of them run into trouble because of violence. So Ted Bundy murdered people, or they get into like fights or something that just go out of control. Or they assault a lot of people mostly, just because they have a really aggressive personality. They can't really conform to being around a social group. And So how are you like diagnosed with that before age 15? Well, before they're age 15, it's just called conduct disorder. But you have to, be, you, have, oh, you, have, you have to have that before. So like before the age of 15, you have to be diagnosed with conduct disorder. And then at the age 18, if you still have those symptoms, it, by then it's classified as antisocial personality disorder. Any other questions? Yeah, so you guys both use descriptors as uh, you call them jerks and then you call them assholes. It implies that they have a choice in their behavior. Is that the case? They do, but not to a point where, I would say it's not to a point where they know it. They, it's just the way that they've grown up. It's just the way that they've been trained in their like reactions, I guess, or how they act around other people. It's just kind of like uh, classic conditioning, how you said it earlier in the year. It's a way that they can't really break away from it, but they don't want to at the same time because it's just how they are. So from, from what I understand, it's just kind of how they think. So for instance, a person
person like the Joker wouldn't care about other people and he doesn't care that he doesn't care. So it's, it's so ultimately he chooses to be that way. In, in a way, but something psychologically tells him not to care. Right. So it might be a harder choice. Yeah. If he all of a sudden, if the Joker woke up one morning and all of a sudden said, I want to be a more positive, loving person, yeah. that would be a very difficult, difficult choice. Yeah. Are there any other questions? All right. Good job. Round of applause.